Hello. Well, as my subscribers will know, I have lots of video recorders. Uh, and unfortunately today, one of them has broken down. It's a Sony Betamax SLT30 multi-standard video recorder, a front loader. The mechanism is very similar to lots of other Sony front loading BT video recorders. So what applies here will apply to others as well. And what's happening is the tape is going in okay, but it's not reliably completing the lace up. So it's stalling and making a strange noise and it will then eject the tape okay, but it can't seem to get it into the position where it will load it, or occasionally it'll work. So uh, let's see if we can uh, solve this problem. So here's the machine. I can eject a tape okay, but when I try to load a tape, well, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So on that occasion it did. Let's try it again. Oh, listen to that noise. Making some strange noises. Okay, let's switch it off and have a look at the mechanism. Like nearly all Sony Betamax machines, uh, this is fully laced at all times. So as soon as you put a tape in, it should lace up. Uh, it is fully laced at the moment. If I hit play, it's playing. Now, if I try to eject, oh look, give it a push. Okay, so there's a lack of torque in the clutch mechanism. Oh look, give it a push the other way. Uh, try that again. Oh, it's struggling even earlier on in the cycle. So it's not, it's not struggling at some particular point in the loading cycle. It's struggling all over the place. So there's a definite loss of uh, clutch drive here. If I try and drive this by hand, which way do I turn it? Remind myself. There you are, that's lacing. So this, this was spinning under motor control. Oh look, it's stopped. Right, and then if I give it a bit of a manual push along the way, tries to keep going. Yes. So if I manually lace it up all the way there and I switch it on, it'll probably play. Oh, I'm not sure what it's trying to do. It's not fully laced, that's why it's whinging. Okay, now let's power it down. The problem lies in a clutch somewhere. The motor is turning and it's turning this gear, but that gear is failing to turn the gear down here that drives the loading ring. Now, uh, I'm not familiar with this fault. It's the first time I've seen it. So uh, it's gonna be a learning experience for us both. First thing I'll do, I think, is take the drive belt off. And I'm not sure what screws I need to undo in order to get this clutch whole, whole clutch mechanism off. That's the tensioner for the um, drive belt. Let's uh, see what screws I have to undo. I'll take this component off the top of the um, solenoid and there's a spring here okay so that's the uh, top part off I'm going to take the uh, circlip off the motor uh, gear then I can release that clutch mechanism so it's a, uh, it's a reduction gear there 
then this is the gear that's being driven but the gears below it are not. Two clasps on this pulley. I'll just pry them apart slightly and hopefully should be able to lift the gear off. There we go. Right, so the gear that's causing a problem, this is rotating and the, one of the gears below uh, are not driving with enough force. So uh, we'll take this plate off next. Right, these are the gears which are, I think, causing me the problem. So I think what's happening here is this is the one that's been driven successfully. And I believe that the way it works is... That, that is a further reduction gear. So we're losing torque here. Uh, we can see the problem right there, can't we? Did you see that? Yes, there we go. That's just fallen off. So this is the uh, gear that it engages with. And I don't think that tiny split is going to be enough to cause it to jump out of its alignment there. It just needs to be glued in. So I will glue that on with some epoxy resin. I think that will fix the machine. Right, that's glued it. The glue is not set yet, but I need to make sure there's no surplus glue on this shaft or it won't rotate cleanly in its housing. Right, that's uh, glued together and I don't think we'll have any more trouble with that. It feels pretty good on there and the shaft is clean, shouldn't have any problems. So let's reassemble this. Right, that's the gears reassembled. Now I just need to put this back together and then mount the gears on the top. Okay, to refit this uh, circlip, you just pop this ring off the top first. Now the top components, but we need to remember to refit this spring first. Right, I can now refit the belt. And if I've done that correctly, the machine will work properly now. Let's try it. No, that's all wrong, isn't it? Right, when reassembling, I may have done this wrong earlier, you have to make sure that the little pin here that's on the uh, solenoid for the pinch roller is on the downside here of this swinging arm. And this swinging arm directs the power from the motor either down to the um, loading mechanism or up to this belt which does the eject. If you're really unlucky and get into a terrible mistimed mess like I just have, where this track and the track here have become out of alignment, what I've done is I've had to slacken these screws off here and free up this gear from this track so that I can get it into the fully unlaced position with the last guide here in its home position meeting up pretty much lined up with the circlip on the pinch roller. Maybe just a very slight angle that way. I've done that by comparing it to a good deck. So hopefully now it will be properly timed. Okay, I think we have this working now. Let's uh, load the tape. Then it laces up and I can operate the deck. and eject. Good. Now it's a rather mad mechanism, so I want to show you some of the key features as I've worked it out. I had a bit of trouble earlier with um, the two parts getting out of alignment. So the rack here and the rotating 
rack on the loading mechanism here uh, need to be timed and the way that seems to be correct is when it's in the fully unlaced position that the circlip here will be just to one side of that loading pin in fact we can push it a little bit further probably so when they're in that sort of alignment then we've uh, got the teeth correctly set here now hopefully they won't fall out of alignment in your case but if you do get to the situation where the pinch roller relative to the rest of the guides here is wrong then you may need to undo these screws either side of this plate lift it up and retime this there may be a way in the service manual that actually explains in more detail how to retime that but I just did it by working it out the mechanism's fascinating let me zoom in a bit and show you some of the key components so we have this toothed belt and that's quite a nice idea because these belts last a long time longer than normal rubber drive belts and that goes on the outside of this tensioner so you can adjust the tension here if you need to but the really clever bit is how the pinch roller uh, actually controls the eject and loading mechanism. You wouldn't believe such a thing. But there's a, a uh, solenoid here, and when it's fully laced up, you'll see that solenoid activate and push the pinch roller, which is by then up here, against the, pin the capstan. But it has a secondary function too, the same solenoid activates this metal component here which acts as a, a brake on this spinning assembly which has a planetary gear inside it and so the way it works is that when it uh, is in the locked position as it is now the drive from the motor goes to this gear and then onto the loading mechanism. But when this unlocks, the drive is released onto this gear, which then operates the eject mechanism, eject and loading. So it's a cunning design that they didn't want to add an extra solenoid to do this switching between drive going down to the loading mechanism and drive going up to the um, front loading mechanism. So they recycled the uh, solenoid for the pinch roller. So let's watch it through again. I'll switch it on. What I'll do is I'm going to kill the power when it's part of the way through so we can watch it. So did you see then this changed into the locked position so that now the motor drive is being fed down to the loading rings. Now if we select play the same solenoid will activate the pinch roller. I hit stop again you'll see this swing back into the locked position. There we go that's locked again now if we hit eject with this locked the drive will go onto this gear to do the unlace stop right there any moment now you'll see this flick out of the way and allow drive to go back up to this gear okay I somewhat annoyed it by cutting the power there so we'll watch it again now now click. Isn't that fascinating? And one more time. So disconnected, connected, stays connected until you hit play. <laughs> so that's a clicking noise you hear on these machines. And eject one more time. Despite the uh, complexity of this thing, it, it is actually fairly reliable. I'm quite impressed with it. Okay, we had that problem with uh, a gear 
on the bottom of this spindle, but uh, it was, you know, easy enough to fix, and considering the machine is around about 40 years old, that's not bad going. I suppose the only complaint is it does sound a bit laboured. It's not the smoothest mechanism. It can sort of, you hear the motor changing speed depending on the load it's got. So it sounds a bit, um, <laughs> a little bit underrated, the motor. Now this is a multi-standard machine, but there are plenty of other Sony beta video recorders with a basic same principle uh, used in the front loading and lacing mechanism. The SLC 20, 30, 40, the F series like F25, um, uh, Beta Hi-Fi, the HF100, uh, there's a whole range of machines. So almost any Sony Beta video recorder uh, will use this with the exception of the early ones like the uh, SLC 6, which is a big chunky um, front loader, um, or the uh, SLC 9 that had a fantastically complicated and really unreliable um, front loading mechanism. Hope you found this interesting. I'll do a lot more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.